I have, I've been, for a very long time, I've been interested in belief systems. Uh, and that's what majority of my work has attempted to uh, explore. And by belief systems, I'm not interested in specific paradigms, dogmas, or whatever. What I'm interested in is the way that science, religion, and philosophy have all attempted to answer um, answer those questions. Uh, to me, they're all attempting to do the same thing. I'm interested in the way that they have um, influenced the, the human thought throughout history as well as they're still, uh, still influencing human thought. That being said, uh, there are generally three series that I've been doing this with. Um, the, the, a lot of uh, some of the first series would be body ornamentation, and one of the things that interests me about body ornament is the way that it functions as communicating a lot about identity of the individual. You can you can and I don't like the word read, but to a degree you can you can assess some, a lot about a person based on their body adornment, and that also I mean, that can be said about clothing as well. I'm like, thinking a little bit broader here, so I'm trying to use that as a strategy to talk about the way that individual identity is formed as well as group identity is formed and how and how we interact, um, how how those those things influence our our thought process. So then the next series would be uh, the chainmail series, and in, the, in that series I'm particularly interested in the idea of the way that, um, I'm interested in protection. Protection has two sides of it. Um, protection has a very positive side, which is a sense of security, but it also has a very negative side, which is that there's a motivation of fear that um, it causes you to employ this form of armor. And so, but this is, so I'm looking at it from uh, how does fear impact our belief systems and impact our um, daily interactions with one another, but again, as an individual as, as well as collective. And in each piece, I try to ask another question um, about that. Then the third series is the uh, is the transient series, and in that series, I'm more interested. Well, I'm interested in, in, in two main things. I'm interested in first of all um, the sciences attempt to define the incorporeal, define God. Uh, again, I think that uh, I think that religion has done it or tried to do it. Philosophy has tried to do it, and science certainly wants to do it. So I'm, I'm trying to use a 19th century obsolete technology to discuss, to, to engage the viewer in this way that science, uh, scientific theory has changed uh, in, when it's tested against new theories, and that's wonderful. That's called the advancement, you know, that's advancing. But at the same time, I'm, I'm interested in what happens to those previous, th uh, those previous things. In particular, like when a, when a science, when a belief, when a science becomes a pseudoscience, that's a really fascinating transition. Uh, and then I'm using the metaphor, transient metaphor for, to, to, well, to talk about um, the temporal quality of our, of our thoughts or our lives, or um, again, of all of our belief systems, just how short-lived those, those, those things really are. bigger question, the one that most people ask me, um, what is the influence of steampunk? <laughs> I was not aware that there was a um, genre or cultural aspect called steampunk until about two years ago when one of my students pointed it out. And since then, of course, I've become really sort of interested in it. Uh, I'm really fascinated by it. 
So that now probably influences my work, certainly more than it, more than it did. Um, I mean, I guess in a roundabout sort of way, considering the types of movies that, that I really liked, I guess there's definitely always been um, some of that. I'm trying to think of this, like City of Lost Children, I guess that would be probably a pretty steampunk movie, or uh, I mean, even though it wasn't intentionally set that way. So then things, that, those types of movies really heavily influenced me, Blade Runner and all of that, so. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about kinetic work lately. Uh, I've, uh, no, I've never truly explored the kinetic um, idea, and in fact, to the degree that uh, I just applied for developmental leave this year, and, and in my developmental leave proposal, that's part of it, is that I want to move this work to a kinetic, um, to have a kinetic component, and more specifically, I'm interested in figuring out ways to have it viewer initiated, whether or not it's motion detectors or, well, my ideal would be mobile um, apps. I think would be a fascinating way to get the viewer's participation with the object. Um, yeah, since almost all of us have cell phones or, or um, smartphones at this point, then that would be an interesting way to, to get you to communicate directly with the work, but then metaphorically talk about that as well, the, the, the separation, the, the interconnectedness and separation. So yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in the kinetics. I have not moved that direction at this point, and that's where I think this stuff needs to go. Um, that, that to me is the next logical step. This video has been made possible by the Wyoming Arts Council and UW Art Museum Gala Funds.